Australia. It's the country where everything can kill you and rugby rules the day. It's also home to 420,000 foreign students. International students especially pursue degrees in business topics like accounting and actuarial science, as well as other science degrees like earth sciences, agricultural studies, and marine biology, just to name a few. Get ready to go down under. Because today, the SCORE channel is going to show you everything you need to know to study in Australia. I'd like to take a moment to just say thank you to Renato for taking the time to go into that comments section on the Spain video and tell us what he wanted to see. This one's for you, Renato. If you want us to cover a country, then just leave a comment below and tell us what country you want us to cover next and we'll make it for you. And then, once you do that, you got to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the video that you requested. I mean, how crazy would that be if you missed your own video? Let's start with the basics. Most bachelor's degrees in Australia are going to take three years to complete unless you opt for one of those fancy honors programs, in which case you'll probably need four years. Now, being in the southern hemisphere means that things work a little bit differently when we talk about dates. The school year typically begins in February or March, depending on the university, although it is often possible for you to join the school as a new student in August when their second semester starts. When should you apply? Well, most universities will take applications until about December 15th, which is right before the holidays, and that's when pretty much everything application related stops. What in actual G? Sorry, my cat was, my cat was climbing on the TV and uh, it's wall mounted so it's fine but still it's a bad kitty. Now Australia is divided into six different states and each one of those states has a government run website that will help you find programs to study in. For example, you can go to the UAC website and you can see every single program that is on offer. However, as an international student, you're not going to be able to apply through these websites you have to apply to each university directly. So if you're gonna do that, what do you need to get in? Let's talk prereqs. So the way it works in Australia is that the government decides which country's certifications are valid. So for example, a United States high school diploma, not valid. International baccalaureate, valid. So what international qualifications does Australia allow? Since Australia is one of the Commonwealth nations, they tend to recognize other credentials from other Commonwealth nations. For example, Kenya's Certificate of Secondary Education or India's CBSE or HSSC are all valid options to study in Australia. Australia also gets a ton of international students from Asian countries, so they also recognize Chinese diplomas and Malaysian high school diplomas by default. Of course, European baccalaureates are also accepted. For American students, and really anyone else who doesn't have one of the qualifications on Australia's list, you're going to need to take the SAT. That's right, the SAT is also really important for Australian admission. And if you need some help raising your SAT score, then you should go to prepwithscore.com and check out our group classes, which we start before every single SAT exam. The document you need to look for is the Australian Tertiary Admission Rank, or the ATAR, ATAR, or ATAR. This document is the full list of every credential recognized by the Australian government along with the points that you need to have for every single program in the university. The next thing you got to deal with is the language barrier. Like I mentioned in my documentary project video, How the United Kingdom Stole Their Futures, which I know it's really long and I know that like nobody's gonna sit down and watch a 20 minute video. I, I get that, I've accepted that already, but you know, you know, watch my video, please. Like the UK, Australia also has a list of exams that it considers secure for visa admissions. If you're gonna try to get a student visa to Australia, you need to have one of the tests from their list. I mean, the only real barrier to studying in Australia is just your ability to speak English, which is no different from what we said in the Canada video, for example. If you find the accent a little bit difficult, I would just recommend watching stand-up comedy like I always do. Jim Jeffries is a hoot. 
And you can also check out Ozzy Man Reviews on YouTube because he's hilarious and he's pretty much the reason I can understand anything an Australian says. So overall, I would rate the difficulty of studying in Australia as one great white shark attack out of five. Okay, so finances are where Australia gets a little divisive. See, on one hand, tuition prices in Australia are a lot cheaper than you would find in other places, like even cheaper than Canada and the United States. But on the other hand, the cost of living in Australia is kind of expensive. Australia is a gigantic island located in a corner of the world where pretty much nobody has any reason to go directly to. And therefore, importing stuff is expensive. Living in Australia is not cheap. As a result, Australia tends to top the list of most expensive countries for international students. Not so much because of the tuition, but because of the combined expense of studying and living there. The good news is there are scholarship opportunities that can help bring down the cost. You're gonna to have to check with each university to see what international scholarships they offer. Some of them are very specific. For example, there are some that are just for refugees. There are others that are just for people applying from within the country who've already been living there. There's other ones that are based on academic merit, others that are based on financial needs. If you apply for a scholarship in Australia, they will probably ask you to apply earlier than the deadline that you have for admissions. Okay, so you've taken your SAT, you've got your English test, and you got enough money to study in Australia. Let's talk about the visa. To study in Australia, you're gonna need a subclass 500 visa. I kinda like the way they name their visas. It's like, I don't know, they feel like codes, like, I don't know, like 007 or something. To get the subclass 500 visa, First, you must be admitted into a university in Australia. So with your acceptance letter in hand, you can begin the process. If you're under 18 at the time of your application for the visa, you'll need to attach a form that gives consent from your parents or your legal guardian to actually let you go into the country because can't just have kids running away from home now, can we? If you're going to arrive in Australia and start courses before you turn 18, you're also going to have to provide a document called the Come on! That's the Confirmation of Appropriate Accommodation and Welfare. Come on! Your university will typically arrange this for you, although it is possible for you to set up your own arrangements uh, independently. Perhaps you find a family that you can stay with or you rent uh, an apartment somewhere. Anyway, you just need to prove that you're not gonna live under a bridge while you study. There's another option too, which is that you as a student visa applicant can actually sponsor an adult relative who's 21 or older to be your student guardian. This is under subclass 590. Now, they can't stay the whole time because they're just supposed to be there while you're a minor, um, but it's an option. As we've mentioned in other videos, you're gonna need to provide some proof of health insurance. This has to be issued from an Australian health service provider. You'll also need to take a medical exam, and then you'll need to show that you have enough money to stay in Australia for the entire time that you'll be there. There's nothing really special about these visa requirements. Until now. They need to make sure that you're not going to be a permanent immigrant. There's an extra requirement which fascinates me. It's called the Genuine Temporary Entrant Requirement, the GTE. You have to prove that you're not going to stay forever after your studies. They are going to ask you to write an essay. Yes, a visa essay. You have to explain why you want to study in Australia, why you're not able to just study that same thing at home, and you definitely need to explain how you totally don't want to stay in Australia forever. It's like you have to say on one hand, I love Australia, I really want to go to Australia, it's got the best education, but I don't love it that much. It's like you want to have a relationship, but you definitely know that you're not going to get married to this country, so you're just like down for a few years of going out together and you'll have some good times, but nobody's going to be really heartbroken when you break up. I miss you. If you need some help writing your GTE requirement, um, you know, prepascore.com, I'll do it. I got you. This GTE requirement comes from government direction number 69. Nice. The last thing you have to do is sign the Australian Value Statement. 
The Australian value statement basically says that you're gonna play cool with Australian culture. You'll be cool with basic democratic concepts like the rule of law and freedom. Gotta say, Australia, I like that you make people sign a paper saying they're cool with freedom. As an American, I always knew there was something I liked about you guys. You can submit this paperwork as soon as you've gotten your acceptance letter, and we would recommend that you do it as soon as you possibly can. And that, my people, is how you study in Australia. The other countries that we're about to cover next are on this same side of the international dateline. Probably didn't put in your top 10 countries that you want to study in, but maybe once we're done telling you about them, you'll change your mind. We're also gonna have another interview with a Peruvian who actually studies in Australia, so you don't wanna miss that. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you next Thursday. You know how long I've been waiting to make a 69 joke? Like, just a simple nice, oh my god, it's finally here. Oh, thank you, Australia!